This short film will illustrate the most frequently given explanation for the different shapes of limpets on rocky shores. It's a common observation that limpets on sheltered shores are often broad-based and short. This one. And limpets on exposed shores are often narrow-based and pointy. Now this is counterintuitive for most people because uh, you probably expect it to be the other way around. Um, exposure in marine biology always refers to the amount of wave action and exposed shores get lots of wave action and sheltered shores get less wave action. So you would expect a broad flat shape ought to be better in the exposed conditions because it will help you hold on. Well, uh, in 1929, J.H. Orton um, offered this explanation in the uh, Journal of the Marine Biological Association of the UK. Here's a vertical section through a limpet. Um, this is the foot that it walks about on. These are its sort of bodily organs and there's uh, mus muscles here <coughs> that hold the shell onto the rest of the body. Here's a limpet on a sheltered shore. The shell is secreted by this tissue here called the mantle. And when it's first made, it's soft and pliable. So on our sheltered shore, there isn't much wave action. The muscles here that um, hold the shell onto the body spend most of their time in a pretty relaxed state. The edge of the shell isn't being pulled down onto the rocks, and so the limpet tends to grow outwards, producing a broad, flat shape. Let's contrast that with the limpet from an exposed shore. Lots of wave action here, as you can see. So the muscles now are contracted for much more of the time. Look at them being contracted there. That means that the edge of the shell here is being pulled down onto the rock. The only way it can grow, therefore, is upwards, and that's producing, therefore, a much taller, pointier shape. Now, if you wanted to investigate this, you could just measure the height of some limpets. But a very large, short, fat limpet is still much taller than a little, short, fat limpet. If you measure both the maximum diameter of the base and the height, and convert them into a ratio, then a big old limpet will have a similar ratio to a small young limpet if its shape is similar. And the same goes, of course, for a tall pointy limpet. If the base is narrow and the height is tall, height over base will give us a relatively big number. Even if it's a baby limpet, if it's got a similar um, shape, it will give us a similar ratio. So using a ratio like that, as you can see, means we can compare the shapes of animals of very different sizes on the same bit of shore. Much more about limpets can be found out, including why many marine biologists would say the explanation that I've just given you is a load of rubbish, um, can be found out by visiting the Daleport blog at the link below directly or via the Field Studies Council's website um, at the link below that. All many other exciting things can also be learned by visiting the Dale Fort blog. Thank you for listening.